I'm Christy. Today I want to talk about trying to do it all with you. So have you ever had a series of weeks where your intentions to get a lot of things done just don't pan out? One thing leads to another and suddenly the week is over and you've gotten so much less accomplished than you ever envisioned. Yeah, I kind of thought so. Well, that's been my last month. We've been back in our school routine for four weeks now and I was excited to get back into my regular routine. We had a great summer but routine is always a welcomed friend, right? And I've done well at getting to Starbucks every day, or nearly so, to get my work done. Yes, I call myself a stay-at-home mom and a work-at-home mom, but I go to Starbucks to actually get my work done. So, significant progress should be happening. And then life happened. Now, I had a dental cleaning, and then I had to get a filling replaced. AJ had an ingrown toenail that required a doctor visit or two. Uh, AJ had a dental appointment. Then I had a greatly delayed meeting with a gal who's helping to get us set up with some of AJ's future services. Now, these are all important things and they're all good things, but then there are other meetings and there are helping friends out and I'm starting a new job that's you know only three hours a week. It's not a big deal, but it's still something else. We're also now juggling three drivers with two vehicles. So you get the idea, the list just goes on and on and on about all these things that are keeping me busy and away from work. Suddenly, here I am a month later, wondering why I'm struggling to get things done and feel like I'm making forward progress. And I'm sitting here writing, I wrote the blog post just a couple hours before it was supposed to go live. But I realized that this really does go along with what this series is talking about. And while this isn't the post that I had originally planned to be put doing this week, but you'll get that one next week. I promise it's already written now as, I, as I'm recording this video. I'm finding that there, this is the perfect example of a time when I need to give myself grace. That's what I'm talking about in last week's post. And I'm working to regain this, ha I'm re working to regain a habit of being in my routine. And obviously I need to give myself grace as I struggle to get back into my focused time. Now, there are so many times, though, that this is exactly what life throws at us. And the real question is this, how will we respond? What will our reaction be? We can choose to embrace the challenges and do our best. Or we can throw up our hands, and give up, and make life more difficult and more miserable for everybody involved. Personally, I choose the first option. As a caregiver, I have to make sure that those I'm responsible for and taking care of are indeed taken care of. That means that when the appointments stack up, my work time diminishes. But my first priority is my family. I've got to make sure to complete these appointments and schedule the follow-ups. You get the idea. You've got the same thing happening in your life. I'm sure of it. Now in the middle of all of these appointments though, I've also added a couple appointments just for myself. Time to recharge. I got a massage a couple weeks ago. Uh, this new job with, is with a friend that I get to catch up with every week now. So it's a total double bonus there. I get a bit of extra money and I get time with my friend. And I'm having lunch today with a friend just to catch up again. So after years of giving and giving, taking care of my family and doing very little to recharge myself, I've discovered the necessity of including time to take care of myself as well. And as I started to make this a higher priority, I find I'm able to be more positive, more content, more pleasant to be around, and I'm now able to accomplish more when I do get time to myself. Well, most of the time anyway. I've learned that I need to take care of the caregiver, hence the name of this series. Taking care of myself means that I have the reserves I need to be able to keep up with all of these appointments, as well as make the phone calls and complete the other items on my to-do list for my family while still getting some time to myself for recharging and some work time as well. Looking at things with a bit of objectivity, I see I've created a new content and released it on time. Barely most weeks, but it's still released on time. I have a plan for the rest of the year. I know where I'm heading, content-wise anyway, for the rest of the year. That's something to be proud of. And I've got a plan and a list of other tasks that I need to get done. Okay, okay, I'm starting to repeat myself now, so I'll end there. But I hope that this personal glimpse into my life has shown you two things. 
One, how tricky it can be to make the time or to keep it a priority to take care of yourself so you can continue to give. And two, proof that making this a priority really is worth the extra effort. So my question for you this week is this, how do you make yourself a priority? I'd love to hear what you do. You can leave me a comment below or you can leave me a comment over on the blog. That's at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This originally posted in September of 2019. As always, I'd appreciate it if you'd share this with anyone and everyone that you think would find it helpful. My deepest desire is to help as many families as I can. The sign-ups are available as usual. Signing up notifies you of all newly released content. I am grateful for the lessons that I've learned about making myself a priority and giving myself grace when things don't go according to plan because all of this reminds me that life is good and there is never a dull moment.